All right, everybody. Hey, we are back from our short little break there, but we are honored and I guarantee prepared to have your mind blown. You better pull out a piece of paper, take some notes, grab a pen, grab a pencil. Heck, if you got something sharp, jab it in there and use the blood to write this because this is going to be one of the most valuable long-term wealth creation strategies out here, retirement strategies that you want to be looking at for your future, but also a great tool to help you in the uh, dealing with, like I said before the break, high end, people that have business that are looking to sell, but Brett's gonna go through a, a variety of couple of things here uh, during his session here. And so we are honored to have Brett Swartz. He is the, uh, the host and the, the founder behind Capital Gains Tax Solutions, not only the business, but the podcast. And he is an investor that I've known for a while now who does amazing things, not only for himself, but for his clients as well out there. Uh, just absolutely amazing guy. Big heart, great, uh, great family man as well. And so stay tuned and welcome to Note Camp 2020 for the first time, Mr. Brett Swartz. Scott, thank you for having me. So excited to add value to you and all of the attendees here at Note Camp 2020. Awesome, man. Now, I'm sure you've got a, power, power, a PowerPoint presentation you want to bring up there and we'll share the screen and get rock and roll over there. And then you want me to interrupt you with questions as I come up or wait till the very end? What do you prefer? You know, I, you're absolutely open to, uh, to do that. I encourage you to do that because there's, I move fast. And then when I move fast, uh, there might be some clarification points. Um, but I believe you are recording this. Yep. Um, so I uh, realize that um, uh, perhaps folks can uh, watch it there too. So Perfect. Awesome. Well, I'll jump off the camera, but I'll be here in the background for you. All right. Take it away. Perfect. Here we go. Well, thank you everybody uh, for having me. So excited. We're going to talk about the three secrets to an optimal timing transformational wealth plan, escape the COVID-19 crash, or really any particular downturn in a marketplace. You know, there's a seller's market and there's a buyer's market and there's times to sell and there's times to buy. And we're going to talk about how to do that in today's presentation. And uh, kind of a subtitle is how I helped Dave to finally achieve relief in retirement when he sold a $7.6 million multifamily building and saved $1.1 million without having to do a 1031 exchange. We, in fact, saved his 1031 exchange. And that is my client, Dave, right there. He is happy. He is smiling. That was his property there in Georgia that he had owned. He was a California resident and had done multiple 1031 exchanges. And so here we go. I'm Brett Swartz, founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions. And as a legal disclaimer, uh, this message is for educational purposes and is solely intended to provide you an overview of how the Deferred Sales Trust works. That's the tool we're going to talk about today. Uh, we are not a CPA, nor do we provide legal or tax advice. And every single circumstance is uh, very widely, and we encourage you to seek independent legal tax and professional advice. So there's a storm, and it's not just the COVID storm, okay? The COVID storm has been a big storm, and hopefully we're getting out of it and things are getting better. Uh, but there's actually a bigger storm that's been going on, and it started after World War II. And what happened? Everyone came home. They were really ex excited and optimistic about the future, and they started to have a lot of kids. And these kids are now the baby boomers, okay? And this is a perfect storm facing baby boomers. So first of all, if you are a baby boomer listening to this uh, presentation, this is absolutely for you. And also, if you're, if you're a professional who helps baby boomers, this, is, this presentation is for you, okay? But let's talk about the demographics. According to the American Bankers Association, there's about $17 trillion of assets that will pass from one generation to the next in the next 20 years. And this is known as the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet, okay? In fact, there's about 77 million baby boomers in the U.S. alone, and every day about 10,000 of them are turning 65. So think about that. That's, a, that's $17 trillion, okay? That's the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet. It's a massive once in maybe a, uh, the, the, uh, a once in a lifetime for sure for us, of what's happening right now. And what are they faced with with this storm? Well, they're on a small little boat and they're like in the middle of the ocean. And there's all these waves coming up and there's all these turmoil and there's these, you know, hurricanes, all these different things that are happening. And as a part of that, they have what's called, they have interest rates that are hovering near 40 year lows. And that's propping up real estate values in a lot of ways, but also low inventory is propping up values. And then therefore real estate is appreciated a great deal. So you couple that with restrictive 1031 timelines, it makes finding a quality deal challenging, okay? So what do they feel like? Well, they feel trapped. They feel trapped and they're reluctant to sell. And this applies, by the way, to high-end primary homes, businesses, commercial real estate, 
or any other highly appreciated asset. And they feel trapped because if they sell, depending on what state they live in and depending on how much depreciation they've taken over the years, they're looking at 30, 33 to about 50% of their gain being wiped out, okay? And capital gains tax and depreciation recapture. Okay, so every single day, high net worth individuals, they pay hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in capital gains tax when they don't have to, okay? So let's, let's circle back to Dave. So Dave was in your position one year ago. Yeah, he was sitting here learning about the deferred sales trust for the first time. And after have buying, buying and sold hundreds of properties, he's sitting there going, what is this thing and how does it work and how does it make a difference in my wealth plan, okay? And they've chose to use the deferred sales trust. And this is his quote. He says, I wanted to be able to time the real estate market. So do you want to be able to time the real estate market? Uh, he said, I wanted to be able to buy real estate, commercial real estate, when it was a low priced market instead of overpaying and a highly appreciated market. So do you want to be able to buy when it's low, right? When it makes sense for you? Uh, do you think prices are perhaps too high right now? Would you like to be on the sidelines? Second, he also didn't want to start over with a brand new 1031 property, right? He's a baby boomer and he's looking to retire. He wants, what's he retiring from? The toilets, the trash, the management, the liability. And what's he want to trade them for? He wants to trade them for time, travel, liquidity, diversification, more time with his family, more time to enjoy his hobbies, more time to pursue things that can give back to the community, right? Versus being a part of just building wealth, he wanted to be able to retire and leave a legacy, okay? Um, so that was his number one reason for using the Deferred Sales Trust, okay? By the way, in the meantime, he plans to keep the funds invested into a conservative portfolio of liquid investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, hard money lending, and then have the funds shifted to commercial real estate when the prices make sense. And you're gonna say, wow, how do you do that? We're gonna get into that right now. But first of all, who is this for? I wanna clarify who this presentation is for. This presentation is for anybody um, who has a highly appreciated business. It could be a dentist, it could be a veterinarian, it could be an optometrist, has investment real estate, you know, self-storage, multifamily, anything that's highly appreciated, highly appreciated land, primary home, okay? This works for the high-end primary homes or other asset subject to capital gains tax worth at least a million dollars, okay? So we're gonna make sure we have at least about a million. Net of all debt, okay? So it's after closing costs to your commissions to your, you know, whoever else. Uh, net of, you know, of course, any, any notes you pay the bank off. And then the, and then the, has, uh, more, the asset itself has appreciated more than $500,000, okay? So if you're hitting those, those parameters, this presentation is for you. It's a must watch. It's a must hear. It's a must understand. And then second, if you're a business professional listening to this, you're going to want to know about it because you're going to want to know how to help your client escape feeling trapped by this capital gains tax. Why? So you can grow your business by solving their number one challenge when they go to sell. So what is a deferred sales trust? Well, deferred sales trust is an installment sale. What's an installment sale? Well, it's known as a seller carryback. You guys are at Note Camp 2020. And so I'm sure you're, you've either learned about it or you know what a seller carryback is. If you don't, your CPA definitely does. Essentially, it's when you can carry paper and defer tax, okay? so. Let's walk through that. Imagine Scott had a, a, had a, a $1 million property he was selling and he didn't want to do a 1031. What could he do? Well, he could carry paper, okay? Meaning he could become the bank. He becomes the lender. And when he does that, he doesn't actually receive any cash uh, right now. And therefore he's in a deferral state on the gain because he hasn't actually received that gain quite yet. And he can live off the interest. We're going to go through that in detail later in the presentation. But at the heart of it, it's just an installment sale, okay? It's a manufactured installment sale and it's specialized and it's, uh, it has so much more benefits. And, but here's the key thing. Why do you need one? And why do you need one for your wealth plan? Well, I wanna give you this analogy. There's an old way of doing things and a new way of doing things, okay? Do you remember going to Blockbuster when you were younger, right? Do you remember walking in and you're looking for that video and it's Friday night and you got your popcorn ready and you got your pizza on the way and all you needed to find is that one video that, that just got released last week or a couple days ago to really make the whole night perfect. But then you walk around that corner and it, or maybe it's the back, you know, they put the new releases in the back corner where, where it's kind of hard to get to so you can walk through everything else. And then you finally get there and what happens, you, find, you see the box, you run up to it and, that, and the, it's behind it, right? You're about to grab it and then somebody cuts right in front of you and they take the movie and they look at you and they smile and then they walk away and you're like, 
you guys both nod because he got there first. He didn't do anything wrong, but you're frustrated because you're like, I wanted to watch that movie. I was 10 seconds away from watching that movie. Okay. But even then, let's imagine you got that movie. You got that movie and, and, and then you, re, you go to play it and you go to set up. But what happens? It's not rewound. Okay. And you got to rewind it. And then it's three day passes and you go to return it. Oh shoot. You forgot. Now you got to get the, the extra fee. And then you get back, then you forgot to rewind it, and then you get the extra. Okay, so you get the point, right? The old way of doing things is like the blockbuster. And I propose to you that the old way of doing things is like the 1031 exchange. The 1031 exchange is like the blockbuster. It's very restrictive. Uh, it's, it, it's lots of rules you have to follow. Um, it's not very flexible, okay? And it puts you in a position where there's more stress and more pressure to purchase property, what I call non-optimal timing, or just... Uh, not when you should be buying, okay? Now, I want you to picture what you do probably every day um, or close to every day, especially during COVID-19, is you turn on your TV and what do you know? Within a couple clicks, you got thousands of options, right? From some of the best, best entertainment um, right on demand and you can just click it and you don't have to rewind it and there's no late fees. Now there's a membership fee, right? Some ongoing fees you have to have, right? Everything has value. Everything that has value will have some fees. But the point is, Netflix is taking over the old way. And as a little side note, I don't know if you know, but Blockbuster actually was approached by Netflix. And Netflix says, hey, we'll sell it to you for $50 million. Blockbuster said, ah, that's okay. We're good. We'll make our own thing here. And they said, okay. And then Netflix, as you know, is one of the biggest entertainment companies in the world now. And Blockbuster is no longer around, okay? So there's an old way and a new way. And let's dive into some of those things in a minute. But in the meantime, I want to make sure you really understand the 1031 exchange, its benefits, but also its challenges, all right? First thing is timing deadlines, okay, of 45 days and 180 days to close. So are you tired of feeling pressured, rushed, or forced to make decisions in 45 days and 180 days to close with the 1031 exchange and overpaying for a property that you wouldn't have purchased had it not been for the tax? Would you prefer not to overpay, take on a bunch of debt in a hot seller's market? So that's number one, right? So our parents, they taught us to sell high and buy low. They didn't teach us to sell high and buy higher 180 days later, which is certainly uh, oftentimes the case with the 1031 exchange, okay? Now, second, depreciation schedule, okay? So for those who own commercial real estate, you probably know, and if you don't, depreciation is the number, one of the number one ways to offset the income that you are earning, okay? So what does that look like? Well, if you earn $100,000, let's say, on an apartment complex, you might be able to write off on the building, depreciate some of its value, uh, let's say 20%, $20,000 of that, of that 100, and therefore you're receiving 100 in cash flow, but you're only paying tax on 80. That's amazing, right? However, if you're fully depreciated, you lose one of the top benefits if you're going to do a 1031 exchange. Why? Because when you sell that asset, your depreciation schedule travels, which is not good. And we liken that to the candle burning at both ends, okay? And the candle is essentially two things, okay? Not only is the marketplace burning in the sense that prices are either going higher or you have a uh, uh, you know, lower inventory to find and it's, you know, cap rates are lower, not so good. And the other side is your depreciation schedule is burning. And so the candle represents your return. So the bigger the candle, the better your return, but slowly as it burns on both sides, you get less and less of a return. It's not as favorable for you. Okay. And so you don't want that. What you want is a new depreciation schedule, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. Number three, this guy, this guy's name is Joe. I don't know Joe. He just had this book and I thought it was interesting. Buy high and sell higher. Okay. Why buy and hold is dead and other surprising investing lessons. Essentially, don't be this guy. You don't want to uh, sell high and buy higher 180s later. You want to sell high and buy low, okay? All right. So my goal for this master class is this, number one, okay? The only way for you to gain the most freedom from capital gains tax, and this is truly, I think, what, you, what, uh, what our clients want, and I think what you guys want. You guys don't want freedom and flexibility, Okay. The most freedom from capital gains tax is through a deferred sales trust optimal timing wealth plan. And number two, the only way to an optimal timing wealth plan is through capital gains tax solutions. That's us. And so I would ask you right now uh, to make a commitment, okay? It's a, it's, a, it's a commitment that as soon as you know 
as soon as you know that this transformational optimal timing deferred sales trust wealth plan can be a tool for you when you sell, okay, whether you're selling today or while you're selling in the future or whether you're a business professional to help somebody do this, uh, that you will go all in and you will master this information, okay? You will master the information with my help, okay? If you want the help, uh, I'd love the opportunity to help you out and, I'll, and I'll, we'll be talking at the very end, okay? So here we go. So I'm Brett Swartz, by the way. Again, that's my name. Um, I started a company called, I started at a company as a commercial real estate broker in 2006, a company called Marcus and Millichap. Um, it's the number one, uh, it's the largest number one national commercial real estate brokerage firm in the nation, specializing in real estate investment sales, strictly sales, no management. I've sold nearly 88 million in multifamily retail office land, senior housing. Um, and I've also invested in commercial real estate syndications myself. Um, deals worth over $100 million in senior housing, mixed-use, industrial, retail, multifamily. I've closed countless 1031 exchanges, Delaware Statutory Trust, which often gets confused with the Deferred Sales Trust. They're completely different. Um, and of course, Deferred Sales Trust. I have my Series 22 and 63, and I'm, and I'm practicing California real estate broker as well. Okay. Um, I've been on some top shows, uh, including Scott Show and a number of others. You might recognize some of these folks. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. If you've ever seen Shark Tank, there's a gentleman named Kevin Harrington. He sits uh, across from Mr. Mark Cuban and they had me on their podcast and I'm working with um, Seth Green right now on helping his clients out as well. So, but it wasn't always that way. I wasn't always a success. It wasn't easy. As you probably know, uh, in your journey or any, for success, there's some, some roadblocks. So my first year in the business in real estate, it was, in, it was in 2006, 2007. I really didn't get any really full time until, until, until July of 2007 when I graduated college. Um, but my first real estate in the time in the business wasn't me. I was one of the guys in the background, you know, this guy holding his pen, trying to figure out how are these people having all this success, you know? And this is more like my cousin. So my cousin received a check. He had been, he's a couple, a couple years older than me, a good mentor of mine for, it was nearly $100,000. Now in commercial real estate, you either make zero or you make a big check. It's usually how it goes, but that's a really big check to make that one. Uh, but he was also struggling too, but he got a big check. And I remember my manager walking over to me and saying, hey, Brett, someday this is going to be you if you keep working hard, you keep learning and you keep being coachable. But it was really hard in the beginning. I had just, I had just got going. I started getting this momentum and I was making next to zero, okay? And in some years, I'd make like 20,000. And then all of a sudden, um, I started to get some momentum, get, getting excited. Um, uh, but even before that, I, I grew up in a family. My background, my parents were divorced. My dad had uh, a lot of wealth and he was in investment real estate and he had built homes in Northern California. And that's kind of how I learned the sticks and bricks behind real estate growing up. But my parents were divorced and it, was, it wasn't very, you know, um, uh, it wasn't the, I guess the nicest divorce in that my mom didn't have any money and my dad didn't want to share very much. Okay. And so I always knew that growing up, I wanted a lot of margin in my life, margin financially. So my family wouldn't have to worry about, about finances. Maybe you can relate. And so, um, I wanted to, to be successful, right. And I wanted to succeed and I, I had my wife and we were, uh, she was at home and taking care of our baby and I just wanted to make it in the business, but it was really hard. And I just started to get some momentum going. And all of a sudden, like a lot of folks, uh, might remember the 2008 crash hit. And that was the big, this, you know, like a brick wall. I just crashed into it just as, as I'm getting going, I hit the wall and I'm like, what am I going to do? Well, I had to figure out a, a, what every good entrepreneur does. I had to figure out a way to keep the dream alive. And what was the dream? Well, a lot of folks were telling me, you know, folks, friends, family, hey, maybe go get a real job. Maybe go get a W-2 job. You have a, fr you have a family at home. And so I said, I'll do a hybrid. I went and I figured out, I said, look, I'm going to go do whatever it takes. Um, oh, by the way, this is the type of deals that we were closing during that time. This is 129,000 unit uh, uh, property, 129,000 um, multifamily property, seven units, okay? Seven units this person bought this for. And so my commission after Marcus and Millichap split was about $1,900. So this was tough. This is why it was one of the challenges for a lot of brokers who weren't making a lot. And so I said, I got to figure this out. So what I do, I went and got a side job at Cheesecake Factory. This is actually my manager here on the left with the tie. And he said, you're coming here and you're getting a job, um, but you're, you, know, you have two degrees and a minor, you play college basketball, you're in commercial real estate. I don't want to put a bunch of training into you just for you to walk away in a couple months if you close a deal. So he goes, I want you here for two years. I said, I'll be there for two years. No matter what happens, I'll be here for two years. I'll give it, to, I'll, I'll work really hard for you. So he agreed and I got the job. And for two years I did that, but I had to figure out another way to win. Right. I said, how do I make it in the business? Um, 
And so just at that time, my manager at Marcus and Milchap brought in a gentleman to speak on the Deferred Sales Trust. And you ever have that moment when, when your brain, you know, it's like it's been opened up to a new opportunity? Um, it's kind of an epiphany moment. Well, that's what I felt like. It was like an epiphany moment where he basically laid out how you don't ever have to have any of your clients feel trapped by capital gains tax or trapped by the 1031 exchange. And like most of, most of, uh, most of you sitting here right now, and maybe, maybe uh, you've been at a moment where you go, hey, it's too good to be true. I don't know if this thing works. That's how I was at first. But I, the more I learned about it, and the more I actually started to apply it in my business, I started to succeed. I, I, so the plan was to roll it out to my clients to see if I can win some more business to keep my commercial real estate dreams alive. And I did. And fast forward, I've been able to grow that real estate business. And then along the way, become an expert for some of the top, top uh, legal minds in the U.S. on on the IRC 453, known as the Deferred Sales Trust as another form of that. And so fast forward, my wife, uh, she's been able to stay home full time. All of our marriage has been amazing. We now have five kids. We live in Northern California and uh, I speak all over the US on this topic, okay? So that being said, after 10 years of all of this, I discovered the hard way, the hard way to implement this, all of the mistakes, all of the challenges, but how many of you want to learn the easy way? Hopefully you're raising your hand. And if you can say yes in the chat, if you're there, that'd be awesome. We'd love any feedback for you. And by the way, as you have questions, please put them in, in the chat here because we're going to go in really fast here in a minute. Um, but by the way, if you've been struggling with the 1031 exchange, if you've been struggling with overpaying for property, if you've been struggling with paying capital gains tax, it's not your fault, okay? Um, but this is probably why, right? Um, first, the perfect storm, right? If you're a baby boomer, you, you've had some real massive success and that you bought low and you've hold, hold, held for a lot of years, have done multiple 1031 exchanges, and now you got a highly appreciated asset, okay? That's probably the no, number one thing. But number two, your CPA doesn't know about it, right? They don't know about it or they would have told you about it. A lot of CPAs are, are generalist in that they're generalist for either real estate or for personal tax returns, but they're not a specialist. It's kind of like your general practitioner. You may go to them for your, for your, um, you know, your blood work, your, your general flu shot and, and some stuff. But if you need surgery, let's say you, 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 tore, you tore your ACL or something, right? You're, he's not going to do the surgery because he hasn't been practicing that. So what you want is a specialist. And that's what we, that's what we are and what, our, what the tax attorneys are for, for the Deferred Sales Trust. Um, number two, uh, or number three, your commercial real estate brokers and the 1031 exchange companies, guess what? They don't want you to know about it. They don't want you to know why, because they get paid on transactions and they get paid when the funds are sitting at the qualified intermediary, right? So they don't want you to know about this, right? Although we have strategic alliances with exchange companies that we work with that actually see the value and want to bring both values to both clients and both options. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But the key is how do you, what's best for you? Not what's best for the company or the, the exchange company or the commercial real estate broker. So if you are, if you've tried to do a, ten, a traditional 10 million exchange, you've no doubt felt the pressure and trap by the 180 days. And we call this the sell high, buy higher. We talked about that a minute ago with more debt 180 days later. But it's kind of like a, a, I call it the 1031 rat race is another way to think about it, right? Where you're just buying and selling, taking on more debt, buying and selling, you know, more units, more challenges. The opposite of that is freedom from capital gains taxes. And that's the deferred sales trust. The 1031 does not work if you want that freedom, okay? So the hard way again is a 1031 exchange, AKA what we've been forced to do for the past 10 years, really the past 25, but the deferred sales trust uh, is a new way to do it. Um, what would you have to do? Well, you have to hire a broker, five to 6% commission to sell your property. You have to sell your property, another half percent in closing costs to hire attorneys to review documents. You have to hire a 1031 qualified intermediary, about $750. You have to identify three properties within 45 days. That's where most people pick that rule and close on one or two of those, three of those properties within 180 days, it creates pressure. You have to apply and obtain a loan, yeah, maybe about a 1% origination fee and closing costs. You have to actually buy the property. Hopefully you didn't overpay for it. You have to take on more debt than you did, uh, than, than you want it to, feeling more pressure. Remember the 1031 exchange is equal or greater debt, equal or greater value often means equal or greater debt, okay? So if you sell a property for 5 million and you had $3 million of debt on it, well, you need to replace that, you know, 5 million or greater. Therefore, you're probably at least taking three on. Oftentimes you're buying that $6 million deal and so now you're putting more risk on yourself, okay? Which takes big, more, more pressure. So your upfront cost, it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars per deal. It's a lot of money. Also, time, six months just to sell your property and then to buy another. 
Time post close, new hire, hire new hire, new management, hire new, uh, have new leases, new utilities, new laws, new collections, new evictions, and it's endless, okay? The point is it can be very stressful and this is why uh, the deferred sales trust is great. So I'm gonna walk you through how to build an entire optimal timing wealth plan and really it's an optimal timing transformational wealth plan in just 30 minutes. So here we go. So hang on to your eyeballs and uh, get ready to take some notes and please put any comments questions as we go. Okay. So the three secrets to an optimal timing transformational wealth plan. Secret number one, selling and deferring hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in capital gains tax, how to legally break free from capital gains tax and find freedom to buy and sell your business or property without ever worrying about the 1031 exchange ever again. Secret number two, optimal timing transformational wealth plan cloning, how to clone a proven wealth plan with capital gains tax solutions in less than five hours and gain more time, wealth, energy, and debt freedom without the 1031 exchange or without giving up control or protection of your cash. Okay. Secret number three, my number one wealth building hack, how to get your deferred sales trust to work in your favor and become an investment rather than an expense. Okay, so this is secret number one. Let's dive into it. Okay, we want to break free again. Let's clarify what we want to do. This is Joe. He wants to sell his business, primary home or real estate. He feels trapped. What is he trapped by? The 30 to 50% in capital gains tax and the 1031 exchange. By the way, the 1031 exchange only applies to investment property. It does not work for a primary home. It does not work for Bitcoin. It does not work for uh, collectibles or artwork. It does not work for, I haven't seen a business person ever do one. So really it's not practical for business. But Joe, feel, he gets hurt right? He gets a black eye every time he either has to overpay for a property or he's not able to sell that he wants to sell because he's just, you know, trapped, right? So he's frustrated. He wants to be able to retire. He wants to be out of debt. He wants to have a passive income stream, or he's just an active real estate investor and he wants to be able to time the real estate market, build more wealth, take on debt when it makes sense and get out of debt when it doesn't make sense, right? In other words, he does not want to 1031 and repeat the same wealth plan he's had with the next property. So what can he do? Well, step number one is, is, uh, is simply this, determine your, or he could determine his capital gains tax liability. And we'll help you do that, by the way. We have a no cost calculator on our website. You go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com and you can see that. But more than that, once we clarify your actual liability on your property or your business or whatever asset you're selling, we want you to envision your ideal wealth plan. So we want you to take an hour or two and just write down, what, what would it look like income wise? What would it look like risk wise? What would it look like debt wise? What would it look like uh, depreciation um, wise to offset income? What would it look like to be able to retire from the toilets to trash liability? And just kind of write that out, envision your ideal wealth plan. And then step number two is to look at a side-by-side -side comparison, really simple. You draw a line down the middle, and you, so on the top, you have the wealth plan, kind of on the, on the first part of the half of the page. And then you draw a line in the middle and then you draw a line down the middle. And then you're going to draw a DST on one side and 1031 on one side. And you're going to start comparing side by side comparison. What does the deferred sales trust offer me? And what does the 1031 offer me? Okay. And then you want to talk with someone who has successfully used the deferred sales trust, right? So you're going to want to know, you know, uh, who's done this and how many times and who, who protects me with the legal part and where are the funds at and, and what's been your experience with it and, and, and how is it working with capital gains tax solutions and, and, the, and the, the attorneys? So you're going to want to talk with somebody. So we're going to give you the, that list of those folks. And then step number four is just to sell and fund your DST. So you imagine you closed escrow and no more toilets, no more trash, no more liability. And their funds are sitting at TD Ameritrade, largest bank in the world, and you have 24 seven access to view the funds, okay? And they're sitting there and they can be invested how and where you want to invest it. We're gonna talk about that more in a minute. But again, I wanna remind you of Dave. Dave has sold hundreds of properties, done multiple 1031 exchanges. He's a baby boomer. And he's just like, it's a relief to be rid of the apartment building. It's a relief to have diversification. It's a relief to be done with the toilets or trash or liabilities. And then he plans to invest back into commercial real estate when the market shifts. Okay. And you can watch our live podcast that I had Dave on. He shares his whole story. Um, if you search this capital gains tax solutions podcast, I think it's episode number six. Just look for Dave Levinson. That's uh, that's his name there. Okay. So how does this all work first? And then we're going to get into the, to the major benefits of the deferred sales trust. Okay. So actually we'll just use Dave's deal. Okay. We'll just use his deal. He was selling his deal for $7.6 million. Okay. And he had about $1.1 million in liability. 
So we're going to put this little square up here. That's, that's the key here. That's the key number. It's got to be big enough. It's got to be at least, uh, at least uh, 100,000 or greater in liability. So he, he clearly got that. So 1.1. Now he had debt of about 4.5. Okay. All right. And this is also key number. We want to find out, get out of debt. We, th we like the Dave Ramsey debt-free plan a little bit here for your commercial real estate or business because you can get out of debt right now. Okay, so he's selling the asset for 7.6 million. Now he finds a buyer. The buyer is all excited. They're ready to buy it for 7.6 million. This is an actual deal that actually closed here about, uh, about 60 days ago, okay? So 7.6 million, he's ready to sell it. Well, guess what? If he sends the funds, and Scott, are you ready to jump in if you're there? If he sends the funds directly to the client, we're going to walk through why this is actual receipt. So Scott, if you're there, jump on. If not, I'll just keep going here. But the key here is if the client received all 7.6 million, right? That tax is going to be triggered. We don't want that. Right. So instead, what can they do? Well, we're going to do <laughs> What's that? Sorry, God, let me go ahead and interrupt you. Go ahead. No, you're there now, Scott. Okay, ready? So it's actual and constructive receipt. So Scott, you ready? If they receive all $7.6 million on this first arrow, um, how much actual receipt did they receive? 7.6. You got it. Now, of course, they're going to pay off the debt at closing, but then the 1.1 is going to be triggered, right? Because they yeah. received it. But Scott, we don't want to do that, right? So we're going to just cross this out. What we want to do is just sell it to the trust. So he's going to sell it to the trust for $7.6 million. And the trust is going to turn around and sell it for $7.6 million to this buyer. Okay. Now, Scott, if, they, if, if the trust bought it for 7.6 and sold it for 7.6, well, how much gain does the trust have, Scott? Zero, zilch, nada. He got it. They just did, a, they just did what's called a, a, uh, a bought and sold for the same price, zero, okay? So the cash goes into here. And you said, well, Brett, why, why would the sellers do that, right? Aren't they going to be you know, uh, frustrated with not having any down payment? And that's... No, we'll talk about that here in a minute and how we get, how, how, how we get around that and how we benefit them. But what, what the sellers are going to get is a, a note for zero. They're going to get a down payment of zero. I'm sorry, and they're going to get a note for the, for the, for the 7.6 minus the debt, which ended up being about 3.1 million, okay? Because we're going to pay off the bank at closing. This is how we get debt free. But Scott, if, if the clients received a note for 3.1 million and took a zero down payment, how much actual receipt did the clients take? Zero. You got it. And if they took zero, Scott, how much tax is owed on zero? Zero. You got it. So the smoke clears and the debt's all paid off. The buyer takes the property. He's gone. And now there's net of all closing costs. Let's just say it's about 3.1 million in the trust. Okay. Now this is where it gets really exciting and, uh, and really cool. But before I get into that, I'm going to run through it one more time so everyone catches this. And if there's anyone there who has a question on this, I, this is the time to jump in and ask the question because you got to make sure you understand this, this, uh, this page. So, or Scott, do you have any questions here? Does that all make sense? Yep, all makes sense so far. People are listening and they're you know, replying with zero and stuff like that. So they're following along too, which is good. Okay, so I'm going to clear it and go real fast again. Okay, so it's assets to sell, 7.6 million. What they're going to do is they're going to sell it for 7.6 to the trust and receive a promissory note minus the debt on this particular property. Remember, there was 4.5 million in debt, 4.6. So they're going to have about 3.1 million for the note, but they're going to get a zero down payment. So they just became the lender and they took 100% financing back. They did a seller carryback, IRC 453, 90-year-old tax law. You guys know it. This is just simply a traditional installment sale simple. The only difference is we happen to have this cash buyer lined up ready to go and the trust owns it for like a New York minute. It's like a simultaneous close. Immediately it's going to sell it for the same price that it bought it for, 7.6 million. And the cash buyer is going to take the property. He is happy and nothing changed for the buyer. Now the funds are sitting at TD Ameritrade. Now they could be invested into, guess what? Scott has a fund. I like to do some hard money lending. Awesome. Let's do some hard money lending. I like to purchase some notes. Okay, great. Let's go purchase some notes. I like to purchase some first trust deeds. Let's do that. I like to just purchase some real estate. Okay, cool. Let's buy an apartment complex. Okay. Now a little caveat. Um, this, uh, this, remember it's 3.1 million. 
um, net of uh, net of the debt that was paid off that's sitting in the trust now, right? So that's a better number here, but 3.1. My, uh, excuse my, uh, my, uh, my writing here, it's kind of, kind of tough with the mouse, but 3.1 million. Okay. So 80% of this can go into this right here. Okay. So 80% of this is next day is liquid and ready to go into a brand new LLC. Okay. And I want you to picture this. This is a $10 million property, but let's actually fast forward. Let's just say we parked it in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, a conservative, conservative allocation for a while here. Maybe some note investments, maybe some, maybe some stuff because we're going to wait for this property that used to be worth, let's say, $14 million. We're going to wait a year or two or whatever. It drops in value. And that's actually what happened in 2006. Uh, one of the deferred sales trust client, we call this the Monday morning quarterback. He sold his property uh, for over $20 million in Minnesota. This gentleman is worth a lot of money and he used the deferred sales trust. And what happened is he sold and he waited five years later. Guess what? That same property he sold was foreclosed on and when it was foreclosed on, the bank called him. And what did the bank say? Hey, Mr. Seller, you sold your property five years ago. Would you like to buy it back? He said, maybe. What's the price? And they said, how about 60 cents on the dollar? He said, a 40% discount? He said, yes. So what did he do? He bought back his same property through his deferred sales trust, all tax deferred by doing this exact thing, okay, at 60 cents on the dollar. We call it the Monday morning quarterback. He dropped back. He sold it at the perfect time. He threw the deep ball perfect, and he caught it five years later. Um, did he have to wait five years? No, but it happened to work out, right? The point is he bought an optimal timing for himself, okay? And guess what? Brand new depreciation schedule. Why? Because we didn't do a 1031 exchange. Brett, really, you can do that? Yes, you can do that. This is exactly what it is. We form a brand new LLC and we do a JV partnership with the trust. And by the way, you're probably wondering what's, what's the term of the note? Great question. They're 8%, typically most of them are 8% net of all recurring fees over any 10 year period of time. Um, most of our folks live off interest only. And then it's a balloon payment due at the 10 years, but you can renew every 10 years for 10 years, okay? And just keep renewing. You can pass it on to your kids inside of your living trust and you just keep this going. And the idea is to go in and out of real estate at optimal timing. Most of us as commercial real estate owners, we know when it's a seller's market. We know when it's a buyer's market. We know the past five years before COVID-19 that it was a seller's market. It was a great time to sell. It wasn't a good time to buy, right? Now we know things are shifting to a buyer's market, right? And maybe not right away for some markets. And you know the jury's still out to see how much it really does drop. But there's going to be some distress. And this is what Dave, my client, believes and what we believe too, that in the next 6, 12, 24 months, there's going to be some real opportunity to buy some properties at a discount for folks who are out of time and have too much debt. And that's exactly what he wants to do. So he has his 3.1 million. Personally, he has it in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and then he has it in um, hard money lending. Okay. I'm going to just a little pie chart allocation here. Okay. And he's just going to kind of keep it preserved. And then as soon as this kind of deal drops, he's going to form an LLC. And this is what we do, a JV partnership. And so Scott, you ready for this? I'm going to walk you through this too, to make sure you catch this. What we're going to do is we're going to set the structure as an 80% owner. And we're going to say, this is Scott. Scott's an 80% owner. Okay. And Scott personally is putting up $0. Okay. But he's doing the sweat equity. He's running this deal. He's finding the deal. Okay. The, uh, the trust is going to put a hundred percent of the down payment. So let's just say they're going to put up, uh, let's make this 8 million because you know, it's probably, it's probably a little better. And let's just say, it's a $2 million down payment or $2.5 million down payment in exchange for, guess what? We're going to mirror this 8%, 8% preferred return. Okay. And 20% of the upside. Okay. Now Scott's put up $0 personally. Now you say, well, he's really put up the 2.5. Yeah. In a sense he has, um, because, but he's the lender. All of this money is owed back to the trust, which turns around and pays him. Uh, but fast forward, let's say we make a big profit and a big gain. What happens? Well, we just pay back that 8% preferred return, which turns around and it pays Scott. I know these arrows are hard to follow here. Um, and uh, let's say it's a million bucks. Now what happens? Well, $800,000 goes to Scott and the next $200,000 goes back to the trust. But Scott says, you know what, Brett? I don't really want to pay the tax on this 800,000. Can I just roll that into the trust? And the answer is, yeah. 
Let's just roll that all back in the trust. And we call that rinse, wash, repeat. Now, hopefully Scott sold it at, good, at a good time. And of course, hopefully he bought it at a good time. And so he made that work. So Scott, any questions there? Or, or anyone else have any questions they have on this particular page right here? Yeah, Marie's got a question here. And I, um, it might take a little bit more uh, clarification, but she says, we sold a business last year. Lots of money went to pay debt. My first question is, how much are we allowed to have as a, mar as a marriage before paying taxes? I, I don't get that. Uh, some of the money went to operate a new sm same smaller business. And then the next question is 1031, as far as I know, does not apply to real estate. We sold a business, correct? Exactly. So the 1031 exchange does not qualify. Okay, let me put it this way. There are ways to potentially do a business like kind for a business like kind, but I've never seen anyone do it or heard of anyone doing it. So I'm not going to say it's illegal to do that, but what I'm going to say is I've never seen it practically speaking anyone do that. That being said, um, the trust can also fund a new business venture. Okay, so let's just say you're starting up, uh, you're, you're a veterinarian and you sold your practice and you, you moved to another place and you set up another veterinarian practice, right? You can do that. Up to 80% of the funds can be used to do this. You can use it to develop real estate. Okay, we have a client out of Alabama right now. They're going to develop uh, 64 units with the funds, all tax deferred, okay? Um, her first part of her question, um, let me see if I got, um, I caught that first one. I'm going to read it again too. Um, it said... Uh, Hmm, answered. How much you sold a business last year. Lots of money went to pay off debt. My first question is how much are we allowed to have a, as a married, as a marriage? Yeah. So I don't know. I think what, I think what the key is you have capital gains tax and if you sold it, it's too late. So I'm not quite sure I follow that first question either. Um, yeah. So some of the money went to operate a new smaller business. Yeah. So what you did is you paid the tax and then your money went there. What we're saying is don't pay the tax and you could have went to that same place. And then, yeah, we already answered number three. Okay. So, Moving right along, we're gonna keep keep it going here. Can you do um, a deferred sales trust, Brett, if you have other investors in the deal? Yes. Uh, Shane says he bought an asset with a syndicate of investors and I like to exit through a, a DST. Who does this work for, Scott? That's a great segue. Yeah. It works for primary homeowners, business owners. We've done car dealerships, tech entrepreneurs, dentists, veterinarians, optometrists, collectibles, artwork. We're doing a Bitcoin case. We're doing a Kentucky horse case. Scott, did you know you cannot 1031 a horse? Did not know that. But you can't deferred sales trust a horse. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? So they called me and they're like, we buy these horses for like a million bucks, like 21 horses typically every year. And we usually sell on average up, we make a $2 million gain. We sell for about 3 million and we do it for the last five or six years. But we're paying all this tax. We can't 1031 a horse. I'm like, you're right. It's hard to find equal or greater value or like kind, you know, I don't know. Uh, but um, you can defer sales, trust a horse because we just do an installment sale. Okay. So this is amazing. It also works for commercial uh, syndicators, operators, developers. So we call it the seamless partnership separation. Okay. Where each person can go their own separate way and either pay their tax or go into the deferred sales trust. And each part of that is, is not co-mingled with the other. Unlike the 1031 exchange where it has to travel, the whole entity must travel. It becomes a nightmare. Okay, so this deferred sales trust is beautiful for that. Here are some actual deals that have closed recently. This is my client, Steve, on the left. He's a mobile technology expert, ultra successful. He came from a family of multifamily owners for 30 years. Dad and family have purchased and bought hundreds of properties. I actually sold this property as his broker for $270,000 per unit in December. He sold it at the perfect time, okay? And 200, and it's flat roofs. It's, you know, 1960s construction. It's a nice location, but 270 a unit. And here's his partner, his partner, John. So I sold it for John and Steve. Um, one of the challenges though that came up um, is Steve's family, uh, his mother-in-law passed away during escrow. And oh. they already had a, a lined up 1031 to go into. And uh, all of a sudden, half the money backs out with John. And now he can't close. So Steve is stuck with, oh my gosh, uh, I'm going to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax. And he goes, Brett, you've been telling me about the deferred sales trust for a couple of years. Tell me about that again. And we started to walk through it. And he goes, oh my gosh, even if John wouldn't have backed out, although he did, and I couldn't purchase this 21 units. He goes, my return on that 21 units was somewhere around three to 4% if everything went right. And I'm taking on millions of debt. And I have, you know, instead of seven problems, I have 21 problems, 21 units, right? Versus seven units. He goes, why would I do that? Why can't I just put it into the trust and get outside of California 
or go into like hard money lending and get 10 or 12 or 15 percent on my money and oh get a new depreciation schedule and so he goes he's so happy he did it and on top of that COVID 19 hit obviously right and everything hit the fan so he is really excited about what he did you can talk to steve um, if you like this is also a transactional attorney he sold his business he's a transactional attorney and he used the deferred sales trust you know, on a business sale of his own business he's out of vegas this is a Google executive. Uh, she sold her home in Cupertino, California, three miles away from, um, from Apple headquarters. So her kids are all gone. Big house, super appreciate it. So if you live in a home to the last five years, you have what's called the 121 exclusion. If you're single, it's 250,000. If you're married, it's 500. But above and beyond that, you owe capital gains tax. And guess what hers was? Around $400,000 of tax. But it wasn't just the money. It was also the ability to relocate to downsize, to take an illiquid asset that's not producing cash flow and move it to a cash flowing producing asset, to move it to stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, to be rid of the toilets, the trash, the liability, and the debt. She paid off about 1.1 million in debt on her property. So she's really happy and it worked out great for her. A few other recent closed deals, um, large real estate business sale, car dealerships in Central California. Uh, the largest primary home was a $26 million primary home. The largest deal ever was a $125 million deal in San Diego. And these are a few that are under contract. But what we're talking about, this by the way, it doesn't have to be the largest deal. Our deals, our average deal is uh, 2.6 million. And we're deferring somewhere around four to $500,000 of tax, okay? We just closed the deal last week was $700,000. So um, it just depends, making sure you have enough, enough liability there. So just realize it, you go, Hey, I don't have all this big money. It's, it's also part of it. I, I come from humble beginnings and part of it, I want to empower everybody who has high, highly appreciated assets. And you know, you do have to have a minimum because our fees will eat up the savings. So we, we do, we, we do make sure we have that, but we'll talk about um, some of those returns here in a minute. Um, but really what we're after is wealth transformation. Okay. A wealth plan that gives you not only debt freedom, not only tax deferred, but also your wealth is now diversified, right? So imagine somebody who owns an apartment complex or a retail building right now or an office building, right? And all of their, they had done multiple 1031 exchanges for 30 years. And they had, because of the entity can't move and because of the restrictions, they had just traded one property and now all the debts in their personal name, right? It's, it's recourse debt. Guess what happened? It could happen and is happening. People are gonna lose everything because their wealth wasn't diversified. The deferred sales trust, guess what? Once it's in the trust, you could put 20% of it in, in, in hard money lending. You could put 20% of it into your own real estate property, right? Where you have debt in your own name. You could put another 20% with a mobile home park syndicator, another 20% with a mobile uh, multifamily or senior housing, the other amount six with the stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. So the point is, diversification is your friend. A lot of our clients, they've made their wealth. They are more in the preservation mode. They don't need all that risk and all that headache, right? Which goes to the next point, your wealth is liquid, okay? You, you, liquidity is your friend today, right? You wanna be out of debt, you want liquidity, and you wanna be ready to strike when a deal comes up. So that is very, very important, okay? Also, again, no more toilet trash or liability. Time to enjoy your wealth. Just think about your personal uh, retirement and or just for me, honestly, all the real estate I own, and I'm 37, five kids, I own it all with syndicators and operators who are doing all the operations and day-to-day -day stuff. So I'll raise the money, I'll participate in the deal myself, but, excuse me, <sighs> sorry about that. Uh, I'll participate in the deal myself, but I, I, my focus is on, on my business and on my family and my kids. Like I don't want another, another business of operating real estate. That's just where I'm at. Maybe when they're all 18 and over, I'll do it myself. But uh, uh, I also like partnering with people too, and it's not my strength. So there's a number of reasons, but the point is, I want the time to enjoy my wealth and time with my family. I don't want to have to, if I'm chasing deals or chasing uh, tenants or especially in California, chasing rent control laws, which is just a nightmare. Um, I don't want that. I want transformation for me and my family. You might want it too. Okay. Second, and this is the biggest thing. Okay. All you get all of the above, but you also get the opportunity to grow your wealth at optimal timing. Again, buy low, sell high. It's super simple. Buy low, sell high. That is the key. We have known the last five years it was time to sell. You could have sold, sat on the sidelines and be here. By the way, when the marketplace, you go, well, Brad, I don't want to be in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Wherever I put the money. Great question. Most of our clients um, and, uh, uh, are in a fund. And this fund, in this particular fund, been around for about 20 years. 
when the market was down 37% in 08 crash, they were only down four and a half percent. Okay. So there are conservative allocations you can put it in. When the market was down 35 to 40% here in COVID-19, at the max, they were down eight to 12%, depending on the fund you're in. And now they're all the way back up. Okay. Where some people are still down, you know, eight to 10 to 15%. So there are conservative places you can put it. I'm, I'm a commercial real estate guy myself. Cash flow is king. I love that. Um, and so, uh, but there's a time and place to, to be in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And there's a time and place to be in real estate, right? The key is what is your optimal timing? How does that work for you? Okay. And then also you can pass leg your legacy. You can pass your wealth in a, in a seamless way. So if you have multiple kids and multiple assets, guess what? I have a client who's in San Francisco. He has four kids and this house lives, this house is right on the ocean. And his parents passed it to him. I mean, 35 years ago, right? And it's, I don't know, $5 million. And guess what? One kid wants to move in. One kid wants to renovate and sell. One kid doesn't care. Uh, and one kid uh, uh, it lives way off and is just detached from it, okay? He's kind of neutral. And so the point is, do you want your kids and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're arguing over this kind of stuff? No, why don't you just sell into the trust and then have a wealth income stream coming in. And as soon as you pass, each of the income streams goes to each kids the way you want it and or to, to your, uh, your, uh, a, a, um, uh, a charity of your choice. Okay. All right. So we've covered all that. And let's imagine he said, yes, I like it. I like it. I like it, Brett, but I have some reservations. How do we know this thing is legal and how do I know my funds are protected? Like, who, is this, who are these companies and where are these funds going? And how, you know, how, how do I know that, you know, someone's like, just take all the money to Mexico, right? First of all, track record, okay? So if anyone ever approached you with a brand new tax deferral strategy that you've never heard about, you need to know that they have a long standing track record. Well, guess what? The Deferred Sales Trust, thousands of successful closes over 24 years. Now, the next most important question you ask is, okay, that's great, but how many times has the IRS challenge this? The answer is 15 times. Okay. Of those, 12 of them were random audits, meaning not triggered by the DST or that the client did the DST. Just because the clients were high net worth, they happened to get audit and they happened to see the DST and they asked about it. But guess what? All 12 of those were no change audits. Not one single issue. Okay. Those next three are formal audits where they said, you guys are just growing too fast. Too much is going on. Too many big deals. We want to see everything. Give me, give me all the, give me all your clients. Give me all, all the, you know, all of everything, the whole legal structure, everything. Great. And then they sat down with them. They said, walk us through it. And they did. And guess what? Those three successful, no change audits. And what did the IRS say? They just said, look, you're just doing an installment sale. Oh, you're being creative with this third party trustee. And that's our role. We're the third party trustee who's, uh, you know, not related to, you know, a family member, right. And is in it for business purpose and can make a profit and make some fees. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Continue as you are. So that's really a big deal, right? Because if imagine you or I were to get audited on our business tax return or our real estate tax return, what are the odds that they don't find one single thing that's off? Probably pretty low, but this is what's happened. We we're batting a thousand with the IRS, not one single issue. Um, also the next thing you want to ask is, well, okay, great, great. So you've done 15 of those with thousands of closes and they've all been successful. Awesome. But what happens when I'm the 16th one, what's going to happen to me? Well, we have audit defense. Okay. Audit defense, lifetime audit defense. It's included in every single deal, meaning get no additional cost uh, to the tax attorneys. They will provide all of the legal defense if you're audited. Okay, great. Also indemnification. They indemnify you as the client as well. They stand behind their work. Very, very important. Next, how are the funds protected? Well, first of all, there's a term called direct access control agreement. It's kind of like an escrow, right? If you, if you have a million dollars for a down payment for a property, you put it into escrow, those funds are protected. The seller can't take those funds, right? Until contingencies are removed, until you sign for it, right? And everyone signs and signs and signs, and then the funds are released. Same ideal here. We, we have a multi-billion dollar bank who provides what's called DACA account protection. The phone, funds only move with your signature. Okay, so... Imagine you were to sell, pay the tax and walk to the bank and open up an account. Did the funds move, move without your signature? No. Well, instead, imagine you sell, you defer all the tax. Did the funds move without your signature? No. The exact same account protections, okay? All right, so that's secret number one. Uh, we're moving to secret number two. We gotta move really fast here too because we are, um, you guys are running out of time, I think. Uh, and maybe Scott, you can give me a little heads up on yeah, About 20 minutes. Okay, cool. So secret number two, the Deferred Sales Trust Optimal Timing Transformational Wealth Plan. 
how to clone a proven wealth plan with capital gains tax solutions in less than five hours. All we need is about five hours of your time and you can gain more time, more wealth, more energy, debt freedom without giving up control or protection of your cash, okay? So here's the plan. We're gonna sell, we're gonna fund the trust, and we're gonna invest it, and then we're going to invest it at any time, my friend, any time, okay? Any time, tomorrow, yes. Day 181, yes. Uh, five years from now, yes. Never be in real estate again, yes. Uh, sold my business, never have to go back in, yes. Maybe wanna go back into a business, yes completely flexible. Think of the deferred sales trust like a Swiss army knife and think of the 1031 exchange like a hammer. And the hammer has its place. It's going to hammer those nails in, but guess what? Every now and again, you need, you need that screwdriver or you need that knife or you need those scissors or you, you need something that's going to be more flexible. Okay. So that's the plan. So step number one is, again, we're going to map out your wealth plan. You're going to map that out with me and your trusted advisors. Who are, bring your trusted advisors in, by the way. We want them to get their blessing. We have thousands of business professionals across the U.S. already. Tax attorneys, CPAs, national law firms, commercial real estate brokers. We've closed deals with Marcus and Millichap, with Keller Williams, Plaster Title, Orange Coast Title, Chicago Title. You name it, we probably close a deal with them, okay? That being said, bring in your trusted advisors and make sure that they ask the tough questions for you. We want their blessing, okay? But also realize a lot of them are generalists and uh, they're not specialists, but most of them will just join us. 99% of them say, great, go for it. Um, and uh, they, they end up joining us. Okay. That being said, an allocation will be uh, sent to you for your approval. The funds only are ever moved or invested with your approval. Okay. So you got to sign off on that. Then you have 24 seven access to view the funds online. Step number two, though, is to sell the asset. So you actually got a list and sell the asset where you say, well, Brad, I don't have any commercial real estate brokers or somebody. Do you need somebody? Yeah, we have connections across the U.S. We can connect you with some of the best. We can help you get that sold, okay? So just sell the property, sell the business. Step number three, fund the trust, okay? That's it. Um, and step number four is enjoy your wealth. So again, as an overview, most of our notes are 10-year notes. So you are the lender. You are like the chairman of the bank. Okay, most of our 8% earnings target, we cannot guarantee that it depends on how the investments perform. However, in the past, we've been able to hit that number. When I say we collectively with all the professionals across the US and the financial advisors we work with and commercial real estate operators, we've been able to hit that every single one of those net of the fees. Most of the cash flow, like on a, on a, on a yearly, most of our clients live off, they keep a little buffer between interest and the fees and, and their principal because they don't want to dip into capital gains tax but it's entirely up to you. You can have the payment stream very flexible, more or less, okay? You can also renew the term after 10 years, every 10 years and keep doing that. Cash out whenever you want and just pay the tax or just pass it inside your living trust and your kids just step right into your shoes, okay? So again, what we used to have to do, what we used to have to do is stay in our primary home, not sell our business, overpay for a 1031 property, more time, energy, toilets, trash, tenants, employees, and liability. Oh, it just goes on. We, have to, we used to have to become the lender for a single buyer, right? So you guys may have done seller carrybacks and go, what's the difference between this and, and a traditional seller carryback? Well, legally, it's the same foundation, but application, a single, um, uh, imagine you said a traditional seller carryback with just a single buyer. Well, what are you saying? You're saying, hey, I trust you buyer to do a good job on my property and to not run it into the ground and I don't have to foreclose on it, Okay. And I'm doing this for some tax deferral. And also maybe you don't have very good credit. So I'm also having to fund you, right? So you're taking a lot of risk. In other words, you're not diversified. You're putting all your hope and faith in that one person who probably couldn't qualify the loan for the loan anyways, right? This is probably why you're doing it in the first place. And second, to take back an asset that, is, 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 uh, that you don't want to take back because that's why you're selling it, right? And also most traditional seller carrybacks are short in nature, three to five years, they're going to add value. They're going to refinance and pay you off. And you're like, oh, well, I just forfeited my 1031. Why would I do that? So that's why most people do not do traditional seller carrybacks, okay? Instead, use the deferred sales trust. We, we get all the benefits of the flexibility of, the, of, of, a, of a seller carryback, but none of the downsides by being tied to a single person. Okay. We also used to have to stay in debt. More time, more energy, more stress, or just pay the tax. Nobody wants to do that. So it's a new way. It's a better way. And it's the deferred sales trust. So who here thinks the deferred sales trust is awesome, is amazing, is transformational. We hope you do by this point, but we understand you're going to take a chance to get to know us a little more, but we do. Okay. That's number two. All right. Number three, 
how to get your deferred sales trust to work in your favor and become an investment and not an expense. This is my secret number three, my wealth building hack, okay? So Scott, are you ready to interact again? And this is a 2020 tax bracket. Yep. All right, let's imagine, uh, you know, it's called Joe and Kim are earning high net worth individuals and they're earning in the 35% tax bracket, right? They're married filing jointly. Okay, well, what happens if 440,000 of their income of that, 200,000 of that was coming from their business? Well, guess what? We can lower and move the tax bracket. We call this net income tax advantage. Why? Because the DST can actually, instead of taking those interest payments, you can let it roll on top of itself. In other words, it's its own separate entity. It's a business entity, and you don't have to take that income in that given year. So you may be making 440,000, 200 from a business, you sell that business, roll it into the trust, and then the interest that it's earning, you let it compound on top of the trust. So your tax bracket actually drops down to 240. Okay, think of it kind of like a SEP IRA or kind of like a 401k, right? You're putting it into this vehicle and therefore you're not paying tax today, you're gonna get a tax benefit. That's exactly what we can do. So in this scenario, it could be around $70,000 in tax savings, right? Versus just staying in the business or staying in the property and being forced to take all of that income let alone the depreciation that we can offset too, okay? So, Scott, does that make sense? Did you follow that? Totally makes sense. You basically dropped us down at 11% tax bracket. You got it. And then later on, let's say in their normal income drops to zero, they, they retire from their other job. Yep. Well, great. Now let's start pulling off the trust that's been compounding for the last five or 10 years, right? And let's stay below that 20, 250,000 mark or whatever that mark is to keep you in a lower tax bracket, right? So we can... We can really make this thing work in your favor. All right. Uh, number one, the other one is, uh, is estate tax savings. Okay. So if you're ultra high net worth and you're listening to this or know someone who's ultra high net worth, they struggle with what's called the estate tax or the death tax, not to be confused with the capital gains tax. Okay. Capital gains tax, you get what's called a stepped up basis upon your assets uh, passing to your heirs, but you don't get estate tax savings. It's completely separate. So imagine, again, Joe and Kim are worth $52 million. Well, the first 22 or so million is spot 23 in 2020 is exempt, that leaves about 30 million inside their taxable estate. Um, that is not exempt. Well, 30 million on 40% is $12 million in estate tax, ouch. So they can get the stepped up basis at 52 for their kids, but their kids are gonna immediately have to pay that 30 million. So the intent is to get it outside their taxable estate. The challenge is they can't get it out fast enough. They I mean, they've done family limited partnerships, they've done some gifting, but they run out of gifting. So the solution is really elegant and it's really nice and it's really simple. It's the deferred sales trust. Because we're a separate business trust and because we're structured in such a way, we can move all of the funds outside the taxable estate in one single transaction. So if they were selling a $30 million apartment complex, well, let's sell it to the trust and let's move it outside the taxable estate. We just saved them $12 million. Number three, we kind of talked about this before, but it's a seamless partnership separation. Okay. We can make this thing really nice because each, folk, each uh, individual can go their separate ways. Looks like we might have a Q&A. Can we schedule... Can we have the schedule of today's speakers? Okay, it's going to you, Scott. Uh, step number four, um, remember, no timing guidelines, purchase at a discount, new depreciation schedule, right? So that's really key. You sold a $10 million asset that had a zero depreciation schedule, and if you did a 1031 in the exact same $10 million deal, guess what? No more depreciation, it's all gone. But if you bought that same deal using your deferred sales trust, which you certainly can do the next day as well, you have a brand new $10 million depreciation schedule of which you can do what's called cost segregation. You can accelerate that and then you can what? Offset all of the income for at least a couple of years on the, on, the, on the deal itself and the cash flow from the trust. Okay, debt-free, invest into multiple commercial real estate syndications. That's amazing. And then again, it's also a 1031 exchange alternative or a rescue if you haven't caught that by now. We can rescue a failed 1031. So if you're going into 1031, there's no reason you shouldn't talk with us, connect with us, and make sure the plan is set in case it fails. Please, please do that. We don't like uh, folks to call us afterwards. Uh, this is Peter, by the way. Peter's a baby boomer. Another quick deal. He sold his multifamily complex. Um, he was the one who told me, Brett, I have 18 problems. I don't want to trade 18 problems for 36 problems. And I said, Peter, I don't blame you. He goes, I've made my wealth, Brett. I'm tired. I'm, I want to retire and I want to be done with all of this headache. He had $550,000 in taxes that he deferred. He had $500,000 in debt that he paid off. And now he's earning an extra $44,000 on what he would have paid in taxes. And think of it like an interest-free loan from the government. The government says, hey, we will give you all of this tax deferral as long as you invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or investment real estate. 
you cannot put it into a primary home, but he's like, that's okay. I already have my primary home. I'm fine. But that is Peter. Okay. So we went through the three secrets there. And uh, so I want to ask you a question. After everything you've seen, if you just did these three things, do you see how this could work for you? If you just modeled what already works, what's already been proven, what's already in place, okay? Um, if you just set up a call with your trusted CPA and attorney, and you set up the call for us, to, all of us to talk uh, with us at Capital Gains Tax Solutions, and you confirm this was works, this thing works, and it's legal, right? We got all those questions answered for you. And number two, if you then were just to sit down with your financial advisor or one of the ones that we have as, a, as our strategic alliance and mapped out where the funds would be invested and how the risk would be accounted for, you just did that number two. And then if you just did number three, if you just were to write, uh, if we were to sit down with, with me, we do a Zoom call, you know, Zoom chat and, uh, um, and walk through this, map it out, how the DST, if you're in Northern California, of course, we can meet face-to-face -face once COVID-19 lets us do that. Uh, map out how the DST is actually an investment, not an expense. So you understand like, hey, I can, I can readjust my tax bracket. I can get a brand new depreciation schedule. Um, I can, you know, I can make this thing really work for me. Um, if you just did that, do you see how it can work for you? Right? So let me ask you a question. You probably feel like this girl, right? You're like, oh my gosh, can I get a copy of these slides? Because I feel overwhelmed with information. It's all of it just like a fire hose. Okay. I know. Just give me a few more minutes and we're going to wrap this thing up. Okay, so can I, may I just give you an offer here? Just a couple more minutes. Here we go. Um, first of all, I want to empower you education. You can start with Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast. I was on Scott's show. You can listen to me as he interviews me about this. Um, and uh, all these other shows too. You can listen to some of the top wealth advisors, commercial real estate experts. You got Joe Ferris. You got Kevin Bupp. You got Victor Menance. You got uh, Marco. You got uh, Michael Blanc. Um, you got all these folks, Yana Weiss, he's a great cost seg guy, Rod Cleef, Seth Green from Shark Tank. You can listen to them interview me and ask me really tough questions and go through it, okay? Um, but here's what you're going to get before I make this offer at the end, okay? Uh, if you were to, um, to engage and work with us, you're going to get white glove CPA tax attorney access. You can bring your trusted CPAs. We can get the, hopefully get the education and blessing. You can get a law firm that indemnifies with over $20 million in E&O insurance policy, which they've never had to tap into. They're also the same law firm who has the 15 no change IRS audits. You can get the transparent 24 seven access to view your account with real time online updates. You can get the DACA SunWest bank account, um, all protection there. Escrow has all the funds all the time and ensures the funds are protected and only move with your signature. You can get the White Gloves seamless transaction coordination. I'm going to work with your commercial real estate broker, your business broker, your M&A attorney, your realtor, whoever. Uh, White Glove professional banker direct access customer support. You get direct access to the bank that's holding the funds. A professional prepared tax return service for your deferred sales trust with a 55-year-old CPA firm who does the tax return. That's part of my role at Capital Gains Tax Solutions to file a tax return on behalf of the trust. Uh, White Gloves Seamless LLC formation and funding coordination. If you wanted to fund the LLC, we have all that ready to go. Access to some of the top wealth advisors in the US, okay, uh, and commercial real estate syndicators. Lifetime IRS audit defense with the number one, again, uh, installment sale law firm in the US with 100% successful track record. And then as a bonus, um, you get the access to, I kind of already said this one, the commercial real estate syndicators, and also a professional network of attorneys who can provide living trust and estate planning services. So you get all of that. So again, who is this for? It's a primary homeowner, business owner, um, investment real estate owner. It's LLCs, S Corp, C Corps, partnerships, LPs, individuals. It works for everybody. It works for Bitcoin, collectibles, artwork, you name it. It works for anyone who has highly appreciated assets, okay? And you can see why these people are paying um, might be paying us $100,000 to set this up up for them, right? You could, you could probably see it if they're saving all of this tax. And that's really the key. You know, how much tax are we saving everybody? Um, um, and I know this sounds too good to be true, right? Or does it sound too good to be true? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe doing such a good job, you're like, no, this is true. I like it. But don't worry. We want to provide you with every opportunity with to, to, once you engage with us and once you are connected with us and you have a live deal, we'll give you a reference list. And again, bring your trusted advisors to speak with us. Here's the key thing though, no cost on our side unless you do the deal, okay? And that's really what this is about. We don't charge anything unless and if you do the deal. So we want to just create clarity. We're going to create space for you to understand and see how this can really transform your wealth plan. But if you wanted to get started today, we have about 1.5% as closing costs, the one time for the tax attorney. And then the annual recurring fee is about 1.5%. That includes the financial advising fee. Now there's a tax return. 
um, twelve hundred. There's a, there's a DACA about fifteen hundred. But all of that collectively, we're hoping to net target eight percent net of all fees at the end of ten years. Okay, and that's not including when you go out to real estate. You already have eighty percent of that upside. Now, if you're a business professional, I want to make I want to give you an opportunity to access our online academy. It's Capital Gains Tax Solutions Academy for ninety seven dollars. You need to mention Scott when you do, and if you do that, I'll give you access to that. And that's including like like our whole playbook. It's including, uh, 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 it's including interviews of me. It's a breakdown. Um, it's uh, worksheets. It's, it's a whole, and it's continu continually growing. We're adding stuff to that. So that's amazing. Um, this is a great way for you to grow your business. So by the way, here's a quick fee breakdown sample. Let's say it's a $10 million deal. Well, you can pay the 40% in tax and have 6 million net, or you can pay the fees. Let's call it 3%, although it's, it is a little bit less than that. Have about 9.7 net. If you had this big of a deal, we, go, we, go, we do do a little bit lower. But using the Deferred Sales Trust, you have about $3.7 million more. So think of this like a $3.7 million interest-free loan from the government. When would you want to pay that back? Never, right? You want to just keep that going. So here's the key again, 100% no cost to us unless you choose to use the DST. So we will educate. We will consult. We will set up the trust. We will get everything ready to go. And if your deal doesn't close, no problem. You don't owe us anything. For some reason you change your mind no problem you don't owe us anything okay um, so you can get started today go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com you can apply if you have a live deal again email me and i'll give you that special discount for the 97 dollars to access our academy and uh, with that i'll open it up for questions and uh scott i'll also uh, bring it back to you yeah great stuff there for you and one of the big things i like to bring up on this too is we're going to see obviously a lot of bigger deals this is a great tool to have so if you're approaching uh somebody who's going to address distress debt who's a uh, distressed deal maybe doesn't want to sell because of all the tax things this is a great tool to have in your tool belt to help it and you're you're cool with jumping on the phone talking with a seller potentially working with somebody who's a potential buyer and walking them through this correct Exactly. And let me tell you actually a live deal right now. So Kevin Buck called me last week. And if you don't know him, he's mobile home park syndicator, operator, top podcaster. And he goes, look, I'm trying to buy this deal. And it's a mobile home park. And this seller has a zero basis. They have $4 million in debt. We're trying to buy it for 7.5, but he's looking at all the numbers. and He's going, I can't sell it because by the time I sell it and pay the tax, I have nothing left. And he's like, oh my gosh, we, we spent months and months and months. He's been chasing this deal for a year and a half got into contract and the seller all of a sudden just says, nope, I'm not going to sign it until I get this thing solved. So he called me and he goes, Brett, give a solution. By the way, he's 85. He's on the property for 50 years. He doesn't want more toilets, trash and liability. Like he wants to retire and enjoy his wealth. He's like, I just want to be able to spend time with my wife and my grandkids and not have to worry about this thing. Also on top of that, he's, uh, he, he got caught in some, um, some bad debt and now his credit is shot. So he's like, my note is coming due in a year. Like he was like, Oh my gosh. Like, so he calls, he goes, do you have a plan? He goes, yep, we have, I have a perfect plan. We're going to replace that debt. We're going to do a partial by fracture 1031. And then we're going to do the rest of it to the deferred sales trust. And part of that too, uh, is Kevin says, I don't necessarily want to buy all of his property. Like I want to buy the mobile home park, but I want the RV park. So we're structuring this whole deal and I'm consulting and walking them all through it. And, and uh, we'll see how it turns out, but that's exactly what's happening. Like as a purchaser of real estate, you're not calling to buy their real estate. I mean, you shouldn't be, you should be calling to solve their problem. You should shift your mind like, hey, I want to buy your real estate. No, hey, I want to solve your problem. How do I partner with you? How do I make this a win-win deal for you? How do I buy your real estate in a way that's going to solve what you're looking for, right? Most folks are calling and saying, just do a 1031. Most folks are calling and say, hey, do a Delaware or carry back. Guess what? They're not really excited about that. They're going to, they've heard that from the last 30 or 100 callers. Call them and say, I have something that's transformational. Would you be willing to see an ebook? Would you be willing to watch this presentation, right? And connect with me. And all of a sudden, when you can solve their problem, you're going to win their deal. And oftentimes at a lower price. So hopefully that makes sense, Scott. Yeah, it totally makes sense there for you. Uh, Nathan asked, Scott, will we have access to recordings? Now, if you guys had a paid ticket, yes, you'll have access to recordings, okay? If you have a paid ticket, you'll have access to recordings. Uh, Matrice asked, can you speak on cost segregation a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So cost segregation is just a way to accelerate what's typically known as street line depreciation. So let's imagine you bought a 
a $4 million multifamily property today, okay? The first thing is the land is, pro is not depreciable. So about 20% of that asset is, is not depreciable, but the next 80% is. So most folks on a multifamily just take straight lines. So they're gonna take that, let's call it 3 million, divided by 27 and a half years, and every year you're gonna take that amount. Now, if you do a cost segregation study, right? And you hire a professional to do this. And we have those strategic alliances and Scott probably does too, right? To actually do that study. And when they do that study, they can accelerate certain components to a five-year term, a seven-year term, some 10, some 15. And so instead of waiting 27 and a half years for everything, a roof, for example, may be 10 years. An AC, an AC unit may be five years, right? You accelerate that. Therefore, you get the time savings of money today and you offset that income. So the idea is to get a brand new depreciation schedule with the Deferred Sales Trust and then use cost seg on top of that. And now uh, let's say that asset's producing uh, $300,000 per year. Well, I might be able to cost seg about 220,000 of that every year for the next four years. So I'm only paying taxes on a little bit of that. Had I done just straight line, maybe it was only you know 50,000. So I'm paying tax on it. So that is a, that's like a DST 2.0 ninja. You know, um, we, we certainly can help you with that. Um, so great question. It's the best link for people to go again is the capital gains tax solutions.com, correct? Yeah, go there. Yep. And, uh, and then email us too. And then again, if you want to, you can apply on the top right corner. If you have a live deal, get with us early, right? Even if you don't have a live deal, get with us early so that you're equipped and empowered with, with, we have like a, a, a blacklist and meeting all the people you want to be talking with before you do this thing. Right. Um, it's called a black box black box list. So, so get with us early. And then um, again, if you're a business professional, just email us and we'll, we'll get you that uh, discount for the whole Academy at $97. Now what's, what's like the drop dead thing. If some, they're talking so many things about doing a 1031, you know, is this thing have to be put in place for the, before the contracts are signed or before they identify, is there a, uh, I can't get involved kind of date. Aspect? Yeah, let's get timing. Right. So let's first start with the ones that have to close the DST and we have to have it set up before close of escrow. That's high end primary homes. That's businesses. That's Bitcoin. That's collectibles. That's artwork. That's horses. That's anything that's not investment real estate. Okay. We need to have this set up before close of escrow and we need to have it before the buyer removes all contingencies. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, you have a purchase and sale agreement and they have contingencies. No problem. Let's put the language in there. They have an LOI. No problem. Hey, we're 15 days from closing, but they haven't removed contingencies. Still no problem. But if you call me, Scott, and say, hey, we're closing in three days, and the buyer has removed all contingencies, there's not one even remaining? No. Sorry, it's too late. Why? Because the IRS deems that as constructive receipt, meaning you basically, the deal is there. I just need to take it from escrow, right? So that's the key. to be here early. Okay. Now, your investment property, you go, oh my gosh, I just sold, and I'm with the QI company. Make sure you're with the QI company. You can't be in your personal bank account. Can I still do this? Yes, yes, yes. Call us and let's talk with your QI company. Now, that being said, not every QI company is created equal. In fact, there are those who are against us and they don't want us to succeed because we're taking their business. So they will not cooperate. And they say, nope, it's not in your exchange agreement. And you're like, what do you mean? You, I'm gonna pay millions of tax. Nope, it's not in your exchange agreement. And you go, okay, fine. Uh, we will indemnify you and do everything. Nope, we should not. So you don't wanna work with those folks. So what the question is, is hey, will you cooperate with my deferred sales trust or my Delaware statutory trust, or my 1031 exchange, open up your options. Now, if you tell Brad, I don't even want to deal with that. Just give me yours. Great. We have those ready to go. So just call us same price. You know, they don't charge any more than the other companies do to have this option. It's already built in. They've already done this. Right. Uh, but if you're like, Hey, I really want to use my, my QI company. No problem. Just have them contact us before you close and, and let's all put that language in there. Now they have it. And now you're protected. That's the key. There you go. Good stuff, there, everybody. So talk, keep in mind, here's the thing you to realize, guys. We've had people ask me a long time, well, what's going to happen with the residential stuff? What's going to happen to commercial stuff? What happened when you look back 10 years ago, we saw commercial assets well before we saw the residential assets. And banks are willing to sell non-performing notes on the commercial side on a one-off basis much faster than they are on a, res on a residential side. So if you see these lists come in as an asset taking back, this could be something you could create a workout with a home with a, the, the borrower, the owner of the property, trying to find a seller and sandwich yourself in uh, like a commercial short sale, but make some profits and, and make a win-win solution on stuff like that. And look, Brett's shaking his head because he knows what I'm talking about because he's been there and seen that and gotten the t-shirt and the scars to go along with it from over a decade ago, right, Brett? Exactly. <laughs> uh, any other questions, comments, concerns? I know it was a little eye-open drinking from a fire faucet. This guy says, boom, drop the mic. 
Well done. I want to meet and start referring clients. There you go. Scott's in, in Arizona you. there for you. Perfect. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate that so much. Yeah, good stuff. Scott Brown's a good guy there for you. So any other final questions? We'll let Brett get back to his Saturday afternoon, get back to playing basketball with the kids. <laughs> Because it's it, hot you don't here, so we're probably trying to take them to the pool now. You know, it's like over 100 degrees. <laughs> I'm wearing a, You're wearing a, a sport coat on the top, swimming trunks on the bottom, aren't you, Brett? <laughs> oh, exactly, exactly. You should see me now. You don't even know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, man. Well, hey, thanks for coming on Note Camp and really uh, just bringing the powerhouse. Great stuff, man. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me, and thanks, everyone, for being a part of it and asking good questions. And uh, if I can help you out, uh, love an opportunity to connect with you. Awesome. Good stuff, then.